The iPhone 14 is Apple's standard entry-level flagship smartphone, but the Galaxy A54 being a couple hundred dollars cheaper is a decent alternative. While the iPhone 14 hasn't been the most popular of the iPhone 14 series, the A54 updates its design and gives you an updated look and feel over the last version. But how much of this updated look and feel will you sacrifice if you go with this bigger Galaxy A54 in speed versus the iPhone 14? Let's find out in this video three two go and see which one can get there first on the boot up now Keep in mind that the Samsung Galaxy is using the Exynos chipset in this comparison and The iPhone is using the flagship grade a 15 although it is last year's chip actually the previous year's chip It should still be a little bit faster now the Galaxy has six gigs of RAM so does the iPhone 14. Now the GPU is also a little bit weaker than that found on the S23 um, on the A54. But again, this phone is not really targeted towards a flagship user. The iPhone 14 targeted towards the main, these are both targeted towards the mainstream consumer, which is why I find this interesting comparison because these two phones could be something a consumer looks and says, you know what, I'll go with that Samsung, save myself a couple hundred bucks. Some people say, you know what, I'll just stick with Apple, what I know and love. These kind of target the same user, uh, just the everyday consumer. So definitely, that's why I find this comparison interesting. On the boot up, the Samsung definitely lost it out by about five or six seconds though. All right, so let's go ahead and see where we stand when it comes to biometrics. Now with the iPhone, we're still using Face ID within this notch design up here that was you know, updated for the iPhone 13 models, but still very fast and you definitely can see you will have no issues with that. However, there is no fingerprint sensor on board. With the Galaxy A54, you are getting a face unlock, which does bypass lock screen. However, this one I will say is a little bit slower than the one you're gonna find on the Galaxy S23 models. So, and sometimes, it will miss if you're not looking at it correctly. Um, definitely a little bit slower than the S23 models, but when it comes to that in-display fingerprint sensor, which is the more secure method here, that also, if you're looking, it does look a little bit laggy when it first boots up, but once the phone gets warmed up, it'll be fine. And again, just like other phones, you can just press there and get in. So I would say, due to the fact that this one is not super fast, I would say they're about equal because you still don't have to look at the Galaxy A54 to unlock it, but the speed of it and not being quite as accurate as the more premium Samsung means that even though the iPhone is a little bit slower with that thing, you have to you know do that extra step of swiping, it still is about the same. So overall, I would say unlocking speed on these two is about the same. Now, one thing to note about the Galaxy A54 is that it does have a 120 hertz display. So if I go down here to display and you scroll down, you'll find under motion smoothness, you can get smoother animations and scrolling, automatically adjusting the frame rates up to 120 hertz. So the iPhone still using its 60 hertz panel here, generally speaking, going through the general operating system, you'll find that it definitely doesn't look quite as smooth as a 120 hertz panel. Uh, definitely, you, but overall, I find that iOS on 60 hertz is about as smooth as like an Android phone on 90 hertz. So while it doesn't have quite as smooth anymore of a look, iOS is still a smooth operating system. So I don't think most users are going to care until they actually see a 90 hertz or 120 hertz, and then it might be harder for them to go back. Now, in terms of the general operating system on the A54, this is actually where it shines. It does really well in just the general operations of the system. The A54 does get a little bit bogged down when opening a ton of applications. But generally speaking, I would say just scrolling through the software actually probably looks a little smoother than the iPhone 14. So it'll win out in that area but we'll see how it does in the app test. All right guys, so we've arrived at the application portion of this speed test. You can see everything is closed out for both phones. They are in their default animations, especially on the Samsung. There's no extra tweaking going on. Everything is default out of the box. Let's go into calendar. You can see faster for the iPhone. They both have the gesture to go back. Let's go into calculator. You can see that look like Samsung. We'll go into clock. That looked like the iPhone. When in the clock, we'll go to stopwatch here. 
You could see how about the timers. And the iPhone looking a little faster even in the sub menus. Let's go into App Store, Play Store. And you could see faster on the iPhone, we'll hit apps. Faster on the Samsung this time. And if you're noticing, you know, even though the Samsung is a slower chip, you know, on paper, you're gonna find that generally, this is where the A54 shines as a general everyday phone. This is not a gaming phone. This is not a, you know, high-end camera phone. This is just an everyday user phone. And the Samsung lost it there. And that's kind of strange, but once in application, it's a little faster now. They're not down by a lot here with the Samsung, but I do think Samsung could really benefit by putting a Snapdragon chip in there um, for sure. Like kind of like what Poco did with the F5, which I might be covering soon. So if you want to see the Poco F5, the regular version, let me know down below. Maybe we'll compare it to the A54, but scrolling through Groupon, pretty similar. So here's the important thing. You can basically get the same stuff done on both of these. Um, it's kind of weird because the Samsung has this 120 hertz, but because the Exynos is not the fastest, and this is not as fast as like an S23, I do notice some chop. It's kind of like a mixture of smooth and chop sometimes, but definitely better than last year's A53 for sure. But the iPhone, while it does have, you know, laggier frame rates with the 60 or hertz, it has a laggier hertz, sorry about that, laggier hertz, definitely feels smoother in general application operation. Let's go into Best Buy and you'll see Best Buy is gonna go to the left and then to the right. So much slower here. Right there, you really seen the power of iPhone 14, just a beast of a smartphone. And over there went first. Again, this is not making Samsung look bad. Remember, we're comparing the A54. Samsung has the S23 if you wanna have this type of power faster but why I did this comparison you know it doesn't have to make sense logically you know I've everything we do here on this channel is not always logical you know I like to make these videos for one entertainment and also I enjoy testing out these two phones to see you know how they perform next to each other because when I'm a consumer I'm not only looking at phones in the same price bracket I'm looking can I get something a little bit cheaper and can it perform as well you know it's just like when you go buy a car for example do you want the BMW or do you want, you know, a different brand that's a little bit cheaper? Can it do what you need? That's the point. You get it? Okay, let's get out of here. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2 and we'll see how this performs on this one. And we do have the iPhone loading that a little bit faster and the Samsung a little bit behind. But see, again, you know, some consumers might value a larger screen punch hole camera and not care that the Samsung takes a little bit longer. They might want the bigger battery capacity when they're playing their games and can, and can sacrifice a little bit of slower performance. I could tell you right now, while the Samsung isn't the fastest phone I've seen this A54, it's not supposed to be, it's not the target. It still has been able to run, you know, the applications, these games, casual games, even COD, it can play COD just fine. Uh, again, not as fast, but it can do it, and it's not going to slow you down really too much. And let's go into Temple Run 2, and we'll see what happens here. And we're going to find a win to the, is it the iPhone? Yeah, the iPhone's loading that much faster. So a lot of times I'll make the speed test and people say, I don't really see a difference. Well, you're seeing a difference in this speed test for sh for certain. You can see the iPhone was faster there, but once in game, who really cares? Asphalt 9. One thing I will say about the A54 that does disappoint me a little bit is that because sometimes you it doesn't really do good with having a ton of apps open and going back and forth between a ton. If you're like doing stuff and you're busy or whatever, like throughout your day and you just need to pop an app open again, it can slow you down and get a little annoying. So that might bother some users. But if you just like press an app, look away and do something else, by the time you look back, the A54 will be there. So <laughs> It's like, how fast do you really need a phone to be these days? That's the question. How fast do you need your phone to be? I'm asking you, comment down below. Does it need to be blazing fast? Does it need to be just adequately fast? Do you value the speed? Let me know down below in the comments. Looks like they're both downloading resources here for Call of Duty. Looks like the iPhone behind here. Let's see which one gets there first. See, it was loading this already. 
on the Samsung. But yeah, like the iPhone, it definitely gets a lot of games first sometimes because developers tend to prefer the platform that they're going to make more revenues on. But, you know, at the same time, bigger titles like Call of Duty Mobile will definitely come to both. So this is taking quite some time to load this up. I already loaded this game. I don't know why it's downloading all this extra stuff. You can see the iPhone getting there first, finally. Both of them took their sweet time, but the iPhone definitely getting there first. And it's in the lobby, finally. So, yeah, while this took forever on both phones, the Samsung was definitely behind here on this one. So I will say that if you're looking for you know, a little bit faster gaming, it's definitely gonna be on the iPhone right here, for sure. We could already been into a match already while we're still waiting on the Samsung, but it wasn't like horribly slow. Both of them were downloading a ton of resources. It wasn't horribly slow on the Samsung. It just took quite some time. Let's go into Geekbench 6. You can see that's faster on the iPhone and 3D Mark. And you'll see faster on the iPhone once again. So overall in this app test, I will say the iPhone did load a lot of applications first, but the Samsung loaded a couple and it wasn't too far behind, very little. Um, so I think that there's still a lot to be said. This A54 has definitely improved over the A53. All right guys, so let's go ahead and run through the applications here. And like I've said before, the iPhone where it really shines is the buttery smooth animations. Now, on the non-120 hertz, it doesn't look quite as buttery, but they still have nailed the in and out on the applications. Even here on the 14 and 14 plus, you'll see if if it's slow looking, that's because I missed a tap, but you could see there's no weirdness with the applications. Let's see how the A54 stacks up here in comparison. Now, I can definitely see it looks smoother with that 120 hertz, but what was that? Did you see that little weirdness that just happened? This kind of stuff will happen on the Galaxy A54. Uh, just because it's not their highest end phone, don't expect the highest. This is a full reload on Subway Surfers, full reload on Dead Trigger, and really slow there for Instagram, slow there on the Starbucks and things are slowing down quite a bit here. So we found its choke point. The choke point on the A54 is gonna be multiple applications open at the same time. It just, it cannot hang. You could see it right here. This is the sacrifice you'll be making. So don't buy this expecting multitasking or having a lot going on at once and expecting really powerful performance. This is more of a single tasking or maybe two tasks at a time, but not like multiple tasks at a time type of phone. I'm sure you're already guessing that there's gonna be no comparison here in Geekbench 6. Final scores are already in with only 38% done on the Samsung. For the iPhone, we're looking at 5347 multi, 2246 single core scoring, uh, pretty darn impressive here. And finally, our scores are in for A54, coming in at a much smaller 2413, 976. I said that with a little bit of emotion. The truth is, I already expected that. Let's go ahead and run a 3D mark test here. Yeah, let's go ahead and hit this. So we'll see how it does here in the stress test. I don't think, you know, it's gonna be a big difference here um, overall. Uh, in terms of just, you know, everyday use. But I do think when you run stuff like gaming, when you run stuff like um, multitasking, really pushing them, you're going to find a big difference. So your $200, your $250, whatever at your carrier is going to get you more for performance with the iPhone 14. But you're going to get another, you're going to get much better zoom on the Galaxy A54. I would argue a better screen and also a bigger screen with longer battery life. So it's really up to you. And here is our final wildlife scores. You're gonna see that the iPhone wins it out big time here, 17.3 or 17 FPS, 4.80 FPS on the Samsung. So what this really tells me here is that you're gonna wanna look for more casual, you know, regular games to play on the A54. If you do start playing COD and stuff like that, don't expect the most boss performance. You're not gonna see it here. You might even get some stutter occasionally on the A54, but with the iPhone, you're well equipped to handle most of what's on 
the entire app store. Now, keep in mind, though, that if you do decide to go with a higher end Samsung, Samsung actually outperforms the iPhone 14. So this score is better than 74% of devices. The A54 only scoring better than 13% of devices. But don't take too much stock into these scores because you gotta remember what are you valuing in your next smartphone. If you're looking for an everyday phone that just works and works well and you're okay with a little bit of slowdown here and there, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it does the job. Great screen, triple camera setup, long battery life. The A54 is right up your alley. If you're looking for a tried and true classic iPhone that kind of looks the same as the past several years, you just want really good performance and solid cameras, you'll still probably really like the iPhone. Both of them are gonna have very long software support. So that's it for me on the iPhone 14 versus the A54 speed test. Clear winner, iPhone 14, but not a winner in every area if you talk about an actual comparison. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you all in the very next episode. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.